So we're in Barcelona for MWC24. I'm here with Joe Russo from Verizon. He is the president of Global Networks and Technology. So that's Thank a you pretty for big me. job, Joe. <laughs> it is a big job, uh, one that I'm honored to do. I've been with Verizon for 28 years. Wow. And it's a, it's a great honor to run the network and technology organization. We do great things. And an exciting time to be doing for so. Sure. For sure. Absolutely. So listen, one of the things you've been doing is uh, sort of revamping the, the, the edge of the mobile network, the radio yeah. access network. Uh, can you just update us on the strategy there and the role that VRAN, Virtual RAN and Open RAN is playing in that strategy? Yeah, so uh, I'll start with the broader context of really just our 5G rollout. Um, and as I'm sure many of your viewers know, we were first to 5G with our millimeter wave rollout, um, really industry leading in deploying small cells for ultra capacity, dense urban uh, millimeter wave 5G. Uh, and then more recently, we've been deploying our C-band network, um, which um, you know has been great for us. Um, and we have more than two thirds of the country in the United States now covered with our ultra wideband C-band and millimeter wave network. Um, and within that, about half of our network uh, is fully virtualized okay. uh, on our way to uh, hopefully an open RAN architecture. Um, but it has really enabled us to do a lot of great things. Um, we not only run our own core cloud platform, but now having virtualized RAN at the edge uh, is really opening up all sorts of possibilities uh, and we think is core to our strategy for the entire network as we move into the future. Okay. So what other kind of opportunities does having a, a cloud RAN platform bring to Verizon? What, yeah. what kind of difference does it make from the past? Yeah, so first it starts with just having a, a broader set of partners that we're working with um, than just one provider. Um, and, and that has helped us. I think it has given us some technology innovation, automation innovation, right. um, and, and taught our team how to work in, in a much more software-centric world. Um, and to me, that's kind of a core capability, I think, that any operator is going to need to have over time. So I think the flexibility, the partnerships, uh, and the automation software centricity has been key to uh, some of the success we've seen in the VRAN world. Okay. Yeah. And a lot of benefits to come in the coming years, I guess. So this, uh, this is only the beginning of yeah. how this is going to play you, out. You know, and it's you know it is a hurdle. You you have to shift your operating model. Um, there are a lot of new things the organization needs to learn. Um, but I am very bullish um, on what we're already seeing, and we're early stage. To your point, we see that in the next few years. Uh, it really starts to unlock more efficiency, more optionality, yeah. um, more ability to be flexible with multiple partners. I think all of that is good for the industry and good for Verizon. Okay, excellent. Yeah. Now, one of the key trends in the U.S. market in the last couple of years has been the uh, the availability and uptake of fixed wireless yeah. access using the 5G infrastructure. How has that uh, impacted your broadband strategy overall? Yeah, so we... Um, we were a leader in fiber to the home. Um, our fiber product is now 20 years old, actually, and wow. I was part of that <laughs> part of that journey. Um, so we have in our ILEC footprint um, over 17 million homes that are covered uh, by our fiber product. But outside of that footprint, um, fixed wireless access is now giving us the opportunity to give customers broadband choice um, in a great, effective. Uh, efficient way of deploying. Um, again, now that we've had this C-band and millimeter wave capacity, uh, it gives us the opportunity to use that capacity for broadband as well. Um, we've now crossed over 3 million customers who have our fixed wireless access product, and they love it. They love the value of it. They love the flexibility, the ease of installation. Um, and we love that it's another revenue stream on a multi-purpose network, right? So. That's, that's what I do, right? Build networks and, and try and put them to use as many different use cases as I can. Absolutely, a real sort of a, a business case there for, for, for 5G that everybody kind of knew about, but it's really coming to the yeah. fore now, isn't right. it? Right, yeah. Now, um, you know, as we all know, this year is like the, the year of artificial intelligence at, at MWC. It's pretty much everywhere. It's in most conversations. Yeah. Um, but it's nothing new, of course. 
Uh, what role does AI play in your operations and your strategy right now? And to what extent has that changed in the last year as, as, as the world of AI has changed yeah. with generative AI? Yeah, yeah. And I, I think to your point that it's, it's new, but not new. Uh, we've been using large uh, language models, big data, uh, machine learning uh, to operate our network for years. Um, when you do anything of our scale, you, you just need that kind of capability for capacity management, self-optimization, et cetera. Um, but we see AI kind of in two places that we're dealing with. The first is the one you asked about, which is how is it changing our operation? Um, and we see emerging use cases, everything from software development to self-optimization of the network, where AI is starting to really become a capability that's being injected into those processes and systems and unlocking efficiency. Um, and we think we're just at the beginning of that and we'll, we'll see that continue uh, to evolve over the next several years. And then the other place that you know, you see a little bit here at Mobile War Congress that we're also very bullish on is um, how does AI start to actually change the mobility experience? Um, so you think about the Samsung phone that just came out, which yeah. has some AI capabilities. Um, today, largely that mo those models and the compute still sit on the device itself. Um, I hope that changes over time. Uh, one of the reasons we've been investing in the capacity and latency in what we call our mobile edge compute platform, which brings edge computing uh, to the edge of the wireless network. We think AI has a place to leverage those capabilities to provide different user experiences as well, both in the enterprise and in the consumer segment. So that's the other place I see AI starting to develop as well. Okay, yeah, no, there's some really exciting and enticing use cases coming out at this show about the future of how you interact yeah. uh, with the world via, I mean, exactly. we used to call it a dumb device, but that was always very pejorative. It sounded kind of not so nice, but that's really where we're headed, I guess. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, and I, I just think that there's all sorts of unlock if you start to leverage the capabilities of edge computing with a high capacity, low latency network. It can really change the form factors, um, you know, with 5G advanced features like REDCap. I think there's a lot of uh, opportunity ahead of us. Okay, great. Um, now, AI isn't the only theme at this show. I mean, the, 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 the talk about network APIs and exposing yeah. network capabilities, this has been started last year, but it's really bubbling up now and, and becoming quite a big thing for all of the operators. How have you had to engineer or, or change the engineering of the network, if at all, to be able to expose these capabilities to, to app developers? Yeah, it, I, we haven't really changed the way we engineer the network. Um, the, you know, we just did some announcements recently around how we continue to advance this idea of APIs in the network. And again, I think it's it all comes into play when we talk about these new use cases um, that we see emerging. And what we want is all of the app developers, enterprises, et cetera, to understand that, you know, now that we're all walking around with mobile devices, there's capabilities we have in the network and it's, you know, APIs we can expose to them that I think will make their enterprises more efficient, potentially security use cases, location use cases um, that are just unlocks for, for use cases that we, uh, we haven't seen yet. Um, so largely, you know, because we're becoming much more of a software centric network, yeah. I think it gives us that capability to say, hey, we can now expose these kind of things for app developers, enterprises to use. Um, how that evolves is what we're all trying to figure out, yeah. right? What are the ones that really are meaningful? And what are the marketplaces? How do customers get them? How do they pay for them? I, I think all of that is yet to be determined, um, but I think there's tremendous capability we have um, that could unlock uh, new and powerful use cases that we're, we're looking to you know, really promote and, and uh, lead in across the industry. Okay. Yeah. And if the past has told us anything, uh, the most popular applications would be the ones that, oh no, we didn't think of that. Yes, but, you're uh, right. Somebody else will come up with the idea, but I guess it's a, a case of having the capability to then to be able to 
make it happen. Exactly. Yeah. And I, you know, it's funny you say that because I, I do talk about it all the time. People talk about 5G and, you know, what's the killer app, et cetera. My experience in this industry is it's a, it's a slow moving, but very fast kind of thing, <laughs> right? We, we all just see it start to happen. And then all of a sudden things show up that we're like, oh yeah, of course. Um, and I think the same thing will happen for 5G. Yeah. Um, you know, there'll be Frisk's wireless access and more and more customers are doing things they never could do before because of the capacity of 5G. And we'll see, you know, some new app that all of a sudden they'll pop up and leverage the capabilities we're building. Yeah, we're hoping for the butterfly effect in the business cases here yeah, uh, yeah. From, from all of this kind of stuff. So, I mean, Mobile World Congress, massive show, thousands of companies here. Yeah. Uh, a lot of them trying to capture the attention of people like yourselves. Yeah. Um, what is it that you most want from the, the vendor community right now that would help you further evolve your strategy? Yeah, there, there's really three things Verizon is all about. And the first one and probably most important is what, what we say is we build the best, most reliable, highest performing and secure networks. That's what we do. That's the mission of Verizon and my organization. So for any partner that I have, uh, they have to align with that mission. So reliability, performance and security of whatever technology they're, they're providing to me is, is paramount. So that's, that's number one. Number two is leading on technical innovation. Um, and that comes in a lot of different forms. Um, but I would say for this year, um, a lot of what I'm looking for is creativity around the use case development, both in the enterprise and the consumer space that you and I just talked about. Um, the industry will be healthy if this massive investment we're all making in 5G gets paid off. Yeah. Um, and I think that's the, the second thing. And then the third is all just about efficiency, right? It's energy efficiency, it's uh, lower power usage, it's, it's more efficient at automation, using AI, et cetera, for self-optimization and efficiency in the network. Um, the reality is we're, you know, we, we all have to just find ways to grind that um, so it benefits our customers and it benefits our businesses. Yeah, yeah. excellent. Joe, really appreciate you taking the time out of your very busy schedule here at MWC to join us uh, on Telecom TV. Thanks very much for your insights and hope to speak to you again in the future. Yeah, thank you so much. Have a good day. And you.